At the gathering to remember Bunny Folger, Uma Heller said, Bunny was not a bitch. She was all alone in this world. No children, no family. No family? Uma Heller said Bunny had no family. Yet 16 seconds later, Lenora Folger, Bunny's mom, appears out of the blue. Let's solve Only Murders in the Building, Season 2, Episode 2, Framed. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on our hunt to learn who killed Bunny Folger, who framed Mabel and Charles for Bunny's murder, why was Bunny in Mabel's apartment wearing the tie-dye hoodie, who killed Rose Cooper, question mark? Spoilers for the first season and season two, the first two episodes of Only Murders in the Building. If you haven't seen the first two episodes of season two, get a job, millennial. We're going to begin this podcast by looking at the double C, the credit clues. The dog is gone. Instead, yellow-headed Amazon Mrs. Gambolini is being walked at the beginning and end of the opening credits. In the closing credits, you're going to see a blueprint of the Arconia, which we know was built in 1908. Plus, the puzzle piece now has Mrs. Gambolini's face on it. Please subscribe to the podcast, follow the podcast, and if you're on YouTube, please stab that like button. With a cheese knife, pick it up and eat it if you have to. We need those likes. Before we run down the suspects, let's see what episode two taught us new about our victim, Arconia board president, Bunny Folger. Bunny's grandfather, Archibald Carter, a.k.a. Peeping Tom, built the Arconia, or his blueprints helped build the Arconia, in 1908. Archibald was a perv, creeper, and he built the secret elevator. Archibald had a daughter, Lenora, and she had a daughter named Bunny, who, according to the opening monologue, claims that Bunny lived every day of her life in the same apartment. Record scratch sound. Wait a minute, what's going on? If we jump back to season one, and we mention this a lot, when young Mabel met young Tim Kono, she mentioned that she was staying at her aunt's place, and Tim Kono said, oh, I know your aunt's apartment, 12A. Mabel didn't correct him. Now, you could say maybe they're kids, maybe that's an innocent mistake, but it is a mistake. Mabel, in both seasons, has lived in apartment 12E, while Bunny lived in apartment 12A. Did the apartment labels get renamed? What is going on here? If we believe Mrs. Gambolini repeats things she heard from Bunny, give me a kissy is something either Bunny was saying to her parrot, or did she have a lover? We possibly have a second victim we need to keep track of. Just like in the first season, we had Zoe and Tim Kono. We might have Rose Cooper and Bunny Folter. Let's look at Rose Cooper for a minute. Rose Cooper lived across the street from the Arconia. It was said she didn't have much money, and that if she tore the canvas of a painting she was working on, she just glued it back together, like in the infamous painting of Charles's father, Savage. It's rumored that she had an affair with Charles's father. Now, right after she sold the painting to Lenora, Rose Cooper went missing. Lenora says she was desperate to get away from a man. Who would have been the man she was desperate to get away from? We could assume Charles's dad, that seems highly unlikely. More likely, she was trying to get away from someone else. And if some of the popular online theories are true, and Rose Cooper is actually Lenora, was she trying to get away from Archibald Carter, her father? What do you think, listeners? Write to us and let us know. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at double PHQ. That's the word double, the single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, at double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash double PHQ. If you're on YouTube, we need you to leave comments. Leave those comments. Give us your theories. Give us your critiques of this podcast, Arconiacs. We want to hear all of it. Before we get to the suspects, let me enter a correction from our last podcast about the secret elevator. Number one, it apparently does go to ground level. What I thought was a roof turns out to be the back alley of the Arconia where the dumpsters are. If one is the ground level and it only goes 11 floors, does that mean Bunny's apartment on the 12th floor isn't part of the elevator's area? I also want to say that for a secret elevator, it can't be that big of a secret. There's no way the police didn't look at Bunny's apartment because she was murdered. They would have seen this elevator. Plus, if on the ground level there's an exit door right next to the dumpsters, the fire department probably knows, Ursula, the building manager, knows, Jose Torres, the super, would know, Lester, the doorman, would know. This secret elevator can't be that secret. Who else would know about it? Third point, 
is this elevator is connected to Bunny's apartment, and she's in apartment A. What other people live in an apartment A on the Arconia? So therefore, the elevator goes right behind their apartment. Now let's look at the suspects. And on our last podcast, we wanted to know from you, did we leave any suspects off? Well, now that we're on episode two, a lot of people, including Gala on YouTube, said you got to include Bunny's mom. On YouTube, Sandra wrote, I would add Nina to the list of suspects. She obviously didn't like Bunny. Sandra also added the note that she finds this season's mystery could be already better than the Tim Kono mystery of season one. Jay Kisses also wanted Bunny's mom on the suspect list. Plus, Cindy Canning, the podcast lady, and Miss Adoko, who has yet to appear in a season two episode, so we won't add her to the list just yet. Uma Heller. This week, we found out that Uma considers herself to be Bunny's only friend. Uma also considers it her responsibility to take care of Bunny's estate. Let us know, why do you think Uma considers this her job? Why isn't she handing off some of these responsibilities to Lenora, Bunny's mom? Last week, she was trying to get the painting, the Savage painting, appraised. This week, she thinks it's her responsibility to find a new home for Mrs. Gambolini. She ends up saddling poor Oliver with it. What do you think, listeners? Do you actually think that was in Bunny's will? Howard Morris. This week, we got confirmation that Howard listens to the podcast. He has heard Mabel talking about killing somebody with knitting needles. Howard has a black eye. He gives a story about how he got the black eye, but that doesn't seem real. How do you think Howard got his black eye? Howard definitely wanted the Podcast 3 to show up at the memorial. Was it to help them or to help frame them? For somebody who has a lot of cats, Howard is also trying to get Miss Gambolini, the bird, to talk to him and talk about him in a positive light. Howard is hashtag not a fan of new board president Nina Lynn. He calls her the B-word. Howard is also part of a yodel shop quartet. For somebody who seemed to keep to himself in season one, Howard is really out there here in season two. It's almost like the suspect light is really falling on him. He may not be the killer, but it certainly could be that he's the one planting the evidence some places. Let's keep both of our eyes, including a black eye, on Howard. Now I wonder, should I put Lester the doorman on the suspect list? You have no place in here! Whoa, okay, Oliver, okay, he won't be in there. He won't be in the list. Not yet. But let's think Lester, of all the people on this show, is at least of the right age group to have some say in some of the past mysteries about Rose Cooper. Not Rose Cooper, but Rose Mary's baby is what Howard thinks of new board president Nina Lynn. Nina definitely wants to make some changes. And, according to Howard, she's a hedge fund manager, which means she's really evil. Ursula's back for season two, and she just made a big sale of 10 cases of gut milk to the podcast crew. Ursula was in the back alley as the podcasters tried to return the painting up the secret elevator back into Bunny's apartment. Look closely, everybody. Ursula was dumping a box of documents into a dumpster. That's one filing system. Alice Banks Backline! is still a suspect and definitely acting suspicious. She is familiar with the artist Rose Cooper, and for the past year, Alice has felt a block trapped in the past, not moving forward. Specifically, Alice calls herself a fraud. She felt like a fraud. Could a fraud forge a painting? Like reproduce the Savage painting? Hmm. Alice has more suspicious activities, filming Mabel with an axe, destroying a piece of art. Mabel acting very violent. Alice claims it's art as therapy, but it could be art as framing. Of course, Alice and Mabel have become much closer. Do we have a ship name for the new couple? Is it Albel or Malice? We put a poll out on YouTube and on Twitter. What do you think the ship name should be? Albel or Malice? Or do you have a better option? Vote on YouTube, vote on Twitter, at WPHQ. We want to hear your thoughts. Up in the penthouse, Amy Schumer, if not acting suspicious, is acting odd. She wants to buy the rights to the podcast where she can play Jan. Hashtag full prestige. She found the Rose Cooper painting down near the dumpster and she brought it up and hung it in her penthouse. Amy flirts with Charles as if she's trying to get into character to play Jan. I wonder if Charles would want Amy Schumer to be a method actor. Big Bunny was introduced to us this week, Lenora Folger, the daughter of Archibald, mother to Bunny. 
Lenora considers herself the owner of the Rose Cooper Savage painting. In fact, she claims she has a bill of sale, and she brought it to her daughter's memorial. She also claims she has macular degeneration. She can't see straight ahead, but apparently great peripheral vision. Lenora's nose may know. After sniffing Charles and Oliver, she doesn't think any of the three podcast crew are guilty of killing her daughter. All the information we have about Rose Cooper comes from Lenora Folger, including the idea that she had a multi-year affair with Charles's father. And I mean Rose Cooper, and I mean Lenora Folger. Let's go to some feedback from Twitter. Sean Gregan, who's at HeyRef on Twitter, wrote, I'm calling it now. Lenora Folger is Rose Cooper. Our good buddy Pat Spinagel, who's at Patman23, even wrote a scene for one of the later episodes. It's a scene where Charles says, My dad was having an affair with Rose Cooper. Lenora replies, I was boning your dad. Charles, what? Dad was having an affair with you and Rose Cooper? And then suddenly Obi-Wan Kenobi shows up to say, Well, from a certain point of view. Hashtag, we covered the Obi-Wan Kenobi show here on Double PHQ Podcast. Let's take a moment to consider this theory. Lenora Folger has a dad who's a creep, who's peeping on girls, maybe peeping on her. Her life is miserable. And suddenly she meets somebody else whose life is miserable, Charles's father. She knows her dad has a lot of peepholes and places in the Arconia where she could be tracked. How is she going to have an affair with a married man? Well, she needs to get a different place. So she gets a place across the street. She starts painting. She starts painting, including painting herself and Charles's father in romantic situations. But then her father finds out, and so she decides she has to disappear. Maybe she's pregnant. Maybe from Charles's father. Maybe from her own father. Chinatown. Spoilers. She has to run away. The painting is the only time in her life she can remember when she was happy. She finds a man, Mr. Folger, who marries her and makes her happy. And once her father passes away, she comes back to the Arconia to raise her daughter alone. All these things could be true, but then why kill Bunny? I don't think she would, if she's really her daughter. We'll learn more about this situation as it goes forward. This week, there weren't many clues to point that Cindy Canning or her podcast partners had anything to do with the murder, but we know they are sniffing around looking for dirt on Oliver. And not only sniffing, they're guzzling down gut milk. Mmm. The big thing about Oliver this week is we got another look at his handwriting. So I'm going to put up on our YouTube video both examples of Oliver's handwriting. Let's see if his handwriting in these notes matches any of the notes we saw in Season 1. What do you think? Write to us at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram. YouTube, leave those comments. If Charles was born in 1945, like Steve Martin was... The painting says 1956, which would mean Charles was 11 years old when this happened. If we can trust Amy Schumer, Charles posed in a Burt Reynolds-esque pose on a bearskin rug showing lots of chest hair. Charles was present when his dad was arrested outside Rose Cooper's place. Bloody Mabel. This week, she announced that she split up with Oscar for... Reasons? What do you think, listeners? Is Oscar going to come back into the picture? I think he might somehow, even though this feels like a very TV way you might write a character off a show. And we know one thing for sure. Mabel can stab with knitting needles pretty well, but she can also swing an axe. Those are the suspects. Did we leave anybody off? What do you think of these suspects? Which one feels guilty? Write to us at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, YouTube, leave those comments, facebook.com slash Double PHQ. We want to hear from you. It's time for more tinfoil hat theory. And this one we haven't figured out. If you are on social media and look at all of these hashtags built around only murders in the building, you'll see that a puzzle piece follows each hashtag. They're unique puzzle pieces depending on what you hashtag out. And we've taken those individual pieces and almost solved the puzzle. There is one piece missing. You can see that this might be a postcard or a painting. The words read, Angel in flip-flops. Can you figure out what the missing hashtag is to get us that final piece? Also, you see the word flip-flops, and it makes you want to flip-flop the image and see if we turn this different ways, could it say something else? Here, by flipping the image vertically, we can see that the E in Angel kind of looks like an A. 
And then the G in angel could be a B. Look at these options, listeners. Can you decode this puzzle message by flip-flopping it? Do you see letters? Do you see words? What do you think? Help us solve the flip-flop puzzle. Time to get to feedback, the best part of any podcast. We got this simple note from eBoy, which said, glad we are back. We're glad you're back, eBoy. We're glad everybody's back. Leave those comments. Share this podcast with your only murders in the building friends. Damien wrote, great video, based on our first video podcast about the first episode of season two. Damien went on to write, if I was to name anyone as the main killer, I would name Uma Heller. She could easily be Rose Cooper trying to get her painting back, and she would be around the right age. Ooh, is Uma Heller Rose Cooper? What a great idea. What a unique way to think about it, Damien. I love that idea. Lily wrote, Bunny's mom, Lenora, only sniffed Charles and Oliver, but she didn't sniff Mabel. She said none of them did it. They didn't do it. Makes me think that Bunny's mom is referring only to Charles and Oliver and not Mabel. Maybe Bunny's mom and Mabel had some sort of bond in the past, as Bunny's mom said, Aw, you sweet little thing, again, without sniffing Mabel. I don't know, but their interaction is a bit fishy to me. Lily, we said it before, the nose knows. Do we trust Lenora's nose? What do you think? Hey, we are 20% of the way done with season two. Are you enjoying it? What do you think so far? This podcast is titled Let's Solve Only Murders in the Building. It's not I'll solve it, it's we'll solve it. Let's solve it together. So give us all your crazy ideas, theories. We want to hear them. 